first habit that we want to develop is the habit of depending on the Holy Spirit's power, not on our own. We live in a world where we technology and accomplishments and, and, and all these things, knowledge that we've learned, we think that we can solve our own problems. And we're so quick to try to handle it on our own. And the reality is, did you know that the Christian life is a supernatural life? And the things that God calls you to do are supernatural. They're not natural. It's not natural to turn the other cheek. It's not natural to, to love your enemies. Right? It's not natural to do some of these things that, that, that Christ calls us to do. It's not natural to say, my money is all yours, God. Use it however you want. I hold it with an open hand. Natural is, it's mine. Right? So don't try to live a supernatural life on natural power. You just can't do it. So learn to, to lean on the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8, here Paul says, by the way, Romans chapter 8 is an awesome chapter if you want to learn about the Spirit's work in your life. If you just want to make a note, it's a great chapter to learn about that. So in Romans chapter 8, verses 12 and 13, Paul says, and I love what he says here. Uh, I like how he says it in the, in the New Living Translation. He's giving us permission to do something. He says, Christian, know this. You have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. Now that might be a beautiful light bulb moment for somebody here today. The Spirit tends to speak to us in this beautiful, still, soft voice. I'm here. I love you. This is the way. Walk in it. Trust the Lord. Be at peace. Don't stress. Every day has enough worry of its own. Don't worry about tomorrow. Live today. Trust the Lord. Daily bread. The flesh doesn't talk like that. The flesh says, you have to have this. Don't you want that? Look how awesome that is. Oh, that would be great. Oh, I long for that. Oh, everything. My appetites are all churned up. I got to have that thing. And I can't wait. I got to have it now. That's just how the flesh works. It's always urgent. It's always an emergency. I want that. I need that. I have to have that. And so Paul here is saying, you know when that thing, when, when your flesh stomps its feet and gets all mad and says, what about me and mine? You're not under an obligation to obey it. You don't have to listen to that voice. You can turn the channel. And then he warns us here. He says, for if you live by the flesh's dictates, you will die. Now, he's not saying your heart's going to quit beating. He just means you're going to die inside, spiritually. See, Jesus is the author of life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The wages of sin is death, but through faith in Christ, we, by His grace, we're brought back to life. Okay? I know a lot of people whose hearts are still beating, but they're dead inside. They're just dead men walking spiritually in terms of their walk with the Lord because they don't know the Lord. I, I heard a preacher talking about this a while back, and, and I thought this was really good. He said, sin is fun. Which might sound weird for a preacher to say. But sin is fun. And, and, and here's the deal. If you don't think sin is fun, then you're not doing it right. Because it's fun. It just is. Let's just be honest. But... It'll mess you up. It's fun for a moment. It's fun for a season. But it'll mess you up. And it'll lead you down paths you don't want to go. A couple ways I heard it stated I thought were pretty cool. Sin thrills. And then it kills. Sin fascinates. Man, nothing can capture your attention like a temptation. But then it assassinates. It draws you in, man, and it promises all this good stuff, and it might even provide it for a short time, and then you end up going, you know, sitting in my office saying, Pastor, I don't know why I did that, and here's all the baggage that I'm dealing with for the last 20 years and because I did these things. You know, and, and, and praise the Lord, there's grace, and, 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 and He's there to forgive us and all that, but the warning here is you don't have to listen to that voice. You can listen to the Spirit, and you can avoid all that. Romans 8 13 the second half of the verse says but if through now here's the here's the phrase if through the power of the spirit not leaning on your own strength but leaning on the power of the spirit 
If by that power you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. You will experience abundant life and joy and peace and victory in Christ. And so I've got a little saying here that I, I put in the notes, and, and this might really help somebody here today. It says, I admit that I am powerless over... I think, we can, I think I have it for the screen too. There it is. I admit that I'm powerless over blank. In your own strength, what is the thing? My temper, my tendency to worry or be critical, this substance, this habit... I don't know what your thing is, but you know what it is. I'm powerless over this thing in my, on my own. But I believe that the power of the Spirit of God will heal me and will give me victory over it. And I just want to encourage you today to put your thing in there. The thing that you're obsessed with, you're worried about, you're, you're, you're playing that tape over and over again, it keeps coming at you, you keep stumbling over this thing. I know you can't beat it on your own. And Jesus never said you could or should try to beat it on your own. But you can do all things through Christ and by the power of His Spirit in your life. Write that thing down. Put that somewhere where you'll see it and say, Lord, I know that you can heal me. And let Him.